How's it going, guys? Well, welcome back to the Blue Shooting, and welcome back to Dou uh, uh, Giaosh uh, and Daosh. Gosh darn it, I always mess that up every time I try and be right, and I, every time I try and prepare myself, and then I get super flustered because I'm starting it off. It's just, ah. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Welcome back, though. Welcome back to the most insane thing we'll ever see this week. Oh my gosh. I think we're building up to the crescendo. Uh, we finally got some answers about um, Tao and me and how he's, she's just flat out dead and was being puppeted. I kind of was wondering about like voodoo puppeting before. So it's kind of neat to see that I was kind of right there. Uh, obviously it was not 100%, but it was neat to be able to, to kind of see how it all worked a little bit. And I think it's interesting that being puppeted allowed Tao to use me's power because it was definitely me using charms, right? I guess I don't know that 100%, but it really was convincing, so it looked like she was doing it. And it kind of makes sense, because Tao, like, she's strong, but she didn't seem as strong as me. And so it's nice, it, nice to be able to see that. But uh, Tao was planning to, to kind of, like, use herself as bait to destroy the apostate. But instead, they're going to try and take the apostate out. So... Nine-tailed fox dude who does not look happy to be here. He's gonna have to confront uh, Luan, Ling Ling, and everyone else again. So I believe this is probably gonna be the conclusion because I know we're in like the last part of the game. And uh, so I have no idea exactly what to expect, but I think this might be the end. So let's brace ourselves, buckle up, and get going in this, shall we? So Shin continued down the corridor, breathing heavily. Anxiety smeared his features. <laughs> yeah, that doctor. That doctor's terrifying. I, I think we got pretty solid evidence that he's a Taoist, but he's the kind that does the body enhancement Taoist. They also, because they said they were like the only ones that would be a likely threat for a nine tailed fox. Like, they'd be the best at fighting them. And he definitely seems to be like multiplying his strength and such by like like multiple times. So he's a very very strong one. It happened just like he, as he uttered the words. Oh boy, Ling Ling stood gallantly before him. Right, that's what she wanted to do. She's gonna use herself as bait. That's what I for I forgot about that. Huh? Ling Ling, I think it actually might not work with you. Like, I'm sure she'll take it kind of personally, but I'm guessing that because he initiated the process of being, like, birthed out of, uh, uh, me, that, uh, that it has to be completed with somebody with the same genetics. Like, it implied that that was a case before. So, like, whether she might be a good vessel, I don't know if it'll actually work for her. That would also be very disturbing for someone to say, like, Bring it on! Ready! No, it's obviously a trap. <laughs> it was somewhat difficult to deny the latter, given the circumstances. Wow, he's pretty stupid. Sheen's anxiety pushed him to action. He hastily took out the pot. An incubus black ball floated out of it. She was about to cast the embryo one. Okay. Something kicked the back of his head, sending him first first into the floor. He slid along the corridor like a washed up uh, Shachikoko. Uh, no, that's not a second poster. Oh, I should have checked what Shachikoko was. Me was now in the place she used to occupy just moments before, while Tao stood a bit further behind her, heaving labored breaths. I like the flickers. I like the additional flickers of power there. That's cool. Alright. Oh, 
お姉ちゃんが許さないんだからお It's got to be the big sister she always wanted to be. Ling Ling answered her words with a smile. MacBook 9 Puppet. Yeah. And then,、uh, can we smash the vase? If we smash the vase, doesn't that do what we need it to do? Like, wouldn't that kill the apostate? After Mi's corpse kicks Shin out of the way. Ling Ling and Tao's eyes met. Oh, yeah. Bring him down. <laughs> Uh huh. No! Shin jumped to his feet and instantly darted after the two girls. His fierce howl s e n t a clear reminder in the end he was but a wild beast locked inside a human shell. This is so much fun! Manipulation. Effective range 10 to 100 meters. One of.、Uh, Taishan's five school of self hexes. It siphons key from the earth to control objects that can be used defensively to launch rocks to walls, but mostly used for construction and fortification. The more able the spellcaster, the larger the object they can control. With enough hard work, one might be able to even reenact a、uh, Laputa. Laputa? That sounds kind of familiar, but I'm not sure what that is. After being seized by an invisible force strong enough to hurl boulders, Mi's corpse jumped up and met Sheen mid fight. t h e i fist connected. And Mi ended up being swept aside. Tao frowned. This power surpassed even her expectations. <laughs> Thought Ling Ling, knitting her eyebrows. <laughs> sure. <laughs> ah, fire extinguisher returns! The next moment, a fire extinguisher crashed into Sheen's face. It hit the fox just as he was about to step forward, upsetting his balance and sending him down to the floor. The back of his head hit the hard concrete. <laughs> He's like, oh crap! Hey, oh. Sheen glanced toward the corridor, seeing Luan posing like a baseball pitcher after a successful throw. <laughs> He's so scared of that guy. Images of the torture he was subjected to just a short while ago came flooding back into his mind. A shiver ran down his spine, his muscles tensed up. It took all the remaining willpower he had not to empty his bladder right then and there. <laughs> Growing pale, Sheen picked up the fire extinguisher and scampered off with a high pitched shriek. For indeed, the combat- combative exterior of wild beasts served only to mask their cowardly nature. That's so interesting. Like, he's one of the most powerful yokai, probably, that there is. I, I, I get that impression、um, based on just. Auxiliary lore I've been exposed to, but like to see him, like, like I like the idea, like, he's got so much power and so much, like,、uh, at his disposal, and yet as soon as he thinks that there's a way for him to actually be hurt, he's a coward. And I wonder if that's the case for a lot in a lot of the stories like that, where like the powerful seem powerful until they're put on the ropes and have to actually stand for themselves. <laughs> To be fair, I think any of us would agree with that, said Luan as he thought,、uh, th- as he thoroughly unconcerned tone. Oh, here comes the blade of death. Ling Ling was about to chase after the fox. But before she could, Luan lifted her small frame up. Ling Ling twisted her body like a cat trying to avoid being picked up by its owner. Luan held her tight in a brace to make sure she wouldn't fall, as so, and also because she was cute. <laughs> ah. Huh? Luan glanced at Tao with Ling Ling still in his arms. Dang. He's got a point, though. I'd be nervous of her taking it on by, himself, her by herself. <laughs> hey. Tao looked at Ling Ling, who was still struggling to escape Luan's embrace. Her gaze was no longer filled with bitter depression, desperation. Ling Ling cocked her head. 
Yeah, Ling Ling for the win. Aww. We're not gonna tell her that Ling Ling's like 300 years old. It, it really is. I didn't seem it didn't seem like Ling Ling had fully understood everything, but she managed to satisfy the grin regardless. This is a great moment to see us hide. Yeah, that's adorable and creepy. ちさつよとがけっぷちに立っていたら近くを用事がふらふらしてたから慌てて死ぬのを止めて用事を保護した感じですねいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやい
Tao, now wearing meets clothes, squeezed her fist. Her wrists were covered in charms. Oh boy. Sheen twisted his face into a grimace. He sensed a strong key emanating from those charms. Right. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. She was like, me not only was a manipulated corpse, but she was also super enhanced. But those enhancements on her without the draw distance would actually probably be more effective. Ooh. Yeah, I think this is going to go down pretty solidly in her favor. Tao slowly approached the fox. Tao's kung fu, huh? Right to the face. <laughs> Tao's charm infused fist connected with Sheen's face. The punch broke the fox's nose, covering his face in blood. <laughs> Oof. She hit him. Again. And again. And again and again. Ooh. Using the charm to transform her overflowing emotions into power, Tao unleashed a wave of destruction upon the fox. Okay. Did she kill him? What about the apostate? <sighs> Tao was breathing heavily. Before her lay the fox convulsing like a beached fish. Mm, no, you make sure he's dead. Tao leaned against the wall. His cool and hard surface felt pleasant against her heated body. Ling Ling and the others caught up to the girl. Hearing Ling Ling's voice made Tao turn around. I knew it! In that moment, Ling Ling's face tensed up. She wasn't smiling in celebration of Tao's victory. Instead, she looked visibly shocked. Tao froze in place. Oh no. The, the apostate. Tao turned around, the sound of escaping her lips sounded almost comical. Yep. Sheen was no longer convulsing on the floor. He'd gotten back to his feet and was now pointing the apostate pot right at her. He's got a point. There's something he'd learned during his fight with Infa. No! Sheen released the apostate's embryo, sending a black and form zipping toward Tao. Leaning against the wall turned out to be the girl's under undoing. It severely limited her mobility. Fetch. No! She could never dodge the projectile from this position. Come on! But just before the embryo could come in contact with Tao, Ling Ling jumped forward and took it into her own body. Oh boy. The girl fell to her knees, right in front of her. The memory of me taking the apostate embryo in her stead flashed in Tao's mind. Her forehead broke out in a cold sweat, her heartbeat sounded like an alarm bell going off. A bitter, disgusting taste filled the inside of her mouth. The catch are covered by the change of those parts. <laughs> Oh boy, this is gonna be good. Sheen flashed a wolfish grin. Uh. What did she just eat it? <laughs> Nothing seemed to be happening. Ling Ling stood up, a confident smile on her lips. Sheen glared at Ling Ling. Huh? 
<laughs> Wait, so hover nine tails. Okay, yeah, we already knew that one. Sheen pointed at Ling Ling like he just revealed the main culprit in a, dis in a detective novel. <laughs> Ling Ling was rendered speechless for a moment. Ling Ling's a boy? Now streaming Ling Ling's room episode. <laughs> Hoping to utilize Ling Ling's flustered state, Yen for, uh, parted her lips and... She said with a suggestion with a smile. Yen, you're terrible, thirsty girl. It was an outlandishly shameless proposal, yet to Ling Ling it sounded noble-minded and worthy of consideration. <laughs> So noble-minded, in fact, that any saint would have had no doubt felt the urge to punch its advo uh, advocator in the face. Yep. <laughs> Ling Ling's face flushed in a mix of embarrassment and anger. Yen started to chant, Undress! Undress! While Luan readied his fist in case things got out of hand. <laughs> Ling Ling produced something from her chest pocket with her teary eyes. It was a Fuko doll with her name written on it. Uh, well, that sucks for the embryo. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Enmi was a, was a school sorcery that utilizes dolls. With the Ushi uh, no Toki uh, Mari. Uh, Mairi. Being the most well-known type of, of offensive in, uh, enemy in Japan. <laughs> in Japan. I don't know why I just died there. Uh, but yeah, it's really interesting. Because, like, um, enemy is very similar to a lot of things that you see in the voodoo traditions. Which is, it's just interesting. I wonder, like, how those are connected. I'm, like, I'm sure there's somehow they must be. Like, maybe some traders, like, long ages past, you know, passed this knowledge down between different cultures. Uh, I don't know. It's just really interesting. Meanwhile, the Nagashi uh, Bina technique considered of letting dogs float away at the surface of the water in order to drive off impurities and misfortunes. Right on it. Tao remembered Ling Ling's words. Yeah. Tao's confusion was instantly dispelled. Yeah. And with that, Ling Ling placed a seal on the doll. じゃ、じゃ、戦争のハラを人形で受けるだなんて。ば、ばかな。なんでそんなことができるのよ。じゃ、法であるかんてきの方に精通してない限りありえないわ。Jenny's technique occurs to can be cast from a dozen or so meters away. Uh, heterodoxy, way to be reborn as a apostate Jian by, by first concealing one's uh, tandem in the vessel and nurturing it until it reaches the embryo stage and forcing it to the woman's strong key. Finally, the closet himself has belly. Jendi is the name of the woman who ingested the egg of a swallow and ended up giving birth to its children. Okay, so she would have had to know that technique in order to be able to counter it so well. Can't be done. Unless... Shin looked like he'd just seen an apple fall up into the sky. Oh, interesting. Ooh. How do you know and master so many techniques that are so uh, not great? Ling Ling started to ho start, still holding the Fuko doll, flashed a confident smile. Uh, Fuko, Venom's Poisons, yeah. Temporary soul. Whoa, where'd you go? Curly away on business. Okay. Just fine. Sure. <laughs> Ling Ling readied her holy sword and drew closer to the fox. Her eyes glistened like a sharpened blade. Though Ling Ling occasionally acted like a childish man, she was still, first and foremost, a, Dao a Daosh warrior. <laughs> uh, 
She she had plucked out a few hairs from his tail and blew them away on the sed with, with a seductive breath. Oh, fetch. As the hairs flowed into the air, they each began to take shape of Shin. An army of Shin copies seemingly appeared out of thin air, closing in on Ling Ling. Uh, you also have to remember not just, like, the fact that me and, like, Tao are there, but we also have the spinning blade of super death. Tao punched one of them with manipulation accelerated fists. Despite being of a larger build, the copy was sent flying backward and it crashed into the wall before collapsing to the ground. It got back up on its feet in no time, though. So they have mass. Tao hesitated. Rather than being disheartened by her failure to fell the enemy, Tao instead found herself puzzled by the sensation she felt upon punching the copy. It was neither hard nor soft to the touch. The only information she had was that she touched something. Hengiko. Uttering that word, Ling Ling linked the bl uh, licked the blade of her holy sword. <laughs> and swung at the copy that survived Tao's attack unscathed. <laughs> the aber aberration let out a brief yelp before returning to its original form as a strand of hair. Interesting. <laughs> Tao nodded and kissed her own fist. Then threw a punch at the nearest copy. The copy tore apart like a piece of paper, disappearing like a wisp of smoke. Why can't you? Are you not human? Calm down, you. Really? Ling Ling opened her mouth wide and stretched out her tongue toward the fan like a puppy. <laughs> Yen made a wicked grin. <laughs> I agree. Luan glared at Yen while coating his knife in his own saliva. His fury was now aimed at Yen, not the co copies lining up behind her. Also, uh... Uh, is Luan technically human still? I don't know if he counts. Tearing through the coffee is like, like a hot knife through butter, Luan sounded an unusually sharp retort. Yeah, with chestnut like mouth. <laughs> Tao blasted the last monster out of the way. The battlefield had returned to its prior state of complete and almost uncanny silence, fleeing like bubbles in a, in a Kao Liang wine. Only a few dozen strands of animal hair lay scattered on the floor, but the air master was nowhere in sight. <laughs> Tao described the current situation with unblemished bluntness. There was neither time to, uh, nor a need for the fancy expression right now. <laughs> Ling Ling was about to dart ahead. <laughs> said Yen. あとは私がいなくても問題ないでしょう。私は今回の件の事後処理をしなくてはならないので。I guess that's fair. Yen gave an evil smile. まあ、早く私に責任が及ばないようにする裏工作をしたいだけなんですけどね。Fair point. Yen. Yeah. Thought Tao, and she thought right. She pretty much is. And there was probably no one who would deny Tao's ex evaluation of Yen's personality. But she's lovely all the same. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yen gave Luan a quick glance. Ah, Nathan. Luan nodded, watching Yen leave. But beneath the usual laid-back facade, his brain was already in high gear. Where would he go? She, and despite being a nine-tailed fox, was surprisingly simple-minded and easy to trick. He wasn't acting according to any strict plan. Yet the assassination attempt in the VIP room was obviously the work of a criminal mastermind. The possibility of someone else pulling the strings from the shadows was exceedingly high. And it was likely that Yen went to investigate just that. Luan wanted nothing more than for everything to end, the, uh, end with this, but... Things might get complicated if the real mastermind showed up. Nonetheless, this was still just speculation in his head. He didn't want to needlessly unsettle Ling Ling. Luan wished he were less perceptive of a person, but unfortunately for him, his suspicions tend to be on point. <sighs> she barged into the VIP room that everyone met in earlier. 
Sweat covered his body from top to bottom as he desperately grasped, gasped to catch his breath. No matter how hard he thought, he couldn't imagine a single scenario that led him to an agreeable future. His mind brought him nothing but pain at this point. He felt like giving up. I don't give any more. Uh oh, what is that? The last day of the Earth? He even wished that a giant meteor would hit the planet and undo everything that had happened. He chuckled at his own thought, regaining a certain amount of composure. He resumed weighing his options. <laughs> he shivered like someone who had just been doused in icy water. Sheen had regained enough composure to face his fears, but he had been completely emotionless to act with courage in the situation. Clutching his head in distress, Sheen glanced nearby the slot machine. Its shiny, colorful design seemed like a beacon of hope before him. Right. Oh no. Oh, you dead, son. <laughs> the white cat's abrupt greeting jolted Shin to his feet. You're not getting out of this, Shin. The white cat held a little bottle in its mouth. It placed it in front of Shin. これを飲みたまえ、シンク。危険はあるが、君ならば対局に飲み込まれたりはせぬだろう。これは。so is this the same one from before that like it makes you sorry um so attached into core the universe well source of unlimited energy well trained and highly disciplined individuals able to challenge incredible power without destroying themselves in the process so this is the one that like like it gives you immortality for a little while but then sucks away your your key until you're a shell hi Sheen quickly picked up the bottle and gulped down its contents. Sheen could immediately feel that something was wrong. Oh boy. He staggered to and fro. So he's just flatting out experimenting on him now. The white cat regarded the fox with cold eyes of a judge pronouncing a sentence. Right. Oh boy. Ling Ling and Luan advanced through the corridor. Maybe we were further from the end than I thought. They ran around at 60% of their speed, wary of traps and ambushes. <laughs> Ling Ling led the charge with Tao and Luan kept silently behind on her opposite sides. So, yeah, Tao. I wanted to hear something, but... Luan glanced at the girl with genuine curiosity. What? Luan-kun. You are the leader of the Taizan Han. Right. Miiが爆死した時、金符で魂が飛散するのを禁じることってできなかったのか？そそんなの無理だよ。Tao shook her head. あ、oops。Alright, so Ling Ling. Are you some kind of like nuclear key reactor? Because you've been keeping Luan going all this time and it doesn't even seem to be facing you and she says it'd be impossible. Human souls fall into two types, Hun and Po. When combined, it's referred to as a Hun Po or simply soul. One part of the soul is responsible for reason while the other part controls body, emotion, and desire. Essentially, a Jiangsh 
Uh, Jiangsh are only have one of two parts of the human soul left within them, meaning they act on instinct like animals. Hmm. I said Luat as he touched his bandana. The holy sword floated in front of Ling Ling. Spinning like a compass, it pointed towards Sheen's location. The group opened the doors to the casino. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ling Ling's passionate expression changed. Oh boy. Oh, she didn't fit out of the doors, his face pale as a ghost's. Ling Ling instinctively jumped backward. Down on all fours, she puked blood. Crimson spread across the floor. The amount of blood lost meant death, even for a yokai. And so Shin lowered his head to his own pool of blood as though bowing in farewell for the last time in his life. It's bad news. Ling Ling's expression clouded over. She was out to defeat Shin and her enemy, but seeing him plead for help and die before she could do anything didn't exactly brighten her mood. If anything, this had just darkened it. In, the, in that very moment... Okay, what the heck is that? The blood sheen puked up squirmed like an army of insects forming a distinctive uh, divination circle. Translatory soul invocation. Sensing the key emanating from the circle, Ling Ling jumped backward with the speed of a bullet. Asked Luan. Heterodoxy throw that was usually siphons power from a positive yang. Uh, heterodoxy te uh, techniques utilize negative yin. It, it opens a path to a whole new school of powerful techniques, but it's a, a cure. A, a negativity, ultimately driving its user insane or transforming them into monsters. Oh. Okay, so they got to fight the doctor, but not in the doctor's form, protecting his own identity. Yeah, Said Shin's course is on new theatrics. Tower Shin installation. Complete. The dead fox stood up and towered before the group. He may have shared the outward appearance of a fox, but this is clearly a different being altogether. The immeasurable pressure, heat, and key emanating from his body were all signs of seething thirst for violence. Oh boy. The man lifted one foot. Susan Shishoken. He then stomped down. Is he gonna take the whole building down? Holy crap. The building trembled, cracks ran along the floor and walls. Everyone momentarily froze up. That's bad. Could it be... All the blood drained from Ling Ling's face. Uh-oh. So the man... The Shaolin uttered... The man Shaolin uttered. He may have looked intentional and identical outwardly, but the being before their eyes was ob obviously different. The pressure, heat, and key emanate from his body. All of them were out of bounds, seething in a palpable thirst for violence. But above all... Terrifying. Yeah, I feel it. 
Quick 11, cadaver. So did you just say, okay, stay more oka. It's a good place to stop. It may drag things out a little bit, but I think we will stop here because, again, it's like one of those things where, like, this is a bit of a shorter episode, but if we stop, if we don't stop here, we're going to just keep going and it's never going to stop because, like, there's no way this is going to be over in, like, 10 minutes or something. So we're going to end here because I keep being surprised. It keeps going. Maybe it hides, like, chapters in the story, like, until you get further in the game. So maybe, like, while I thought, like, I was at the end, maybe that was just a deception of the way the game is built so i guess we have a lot more to explore for this so i'm excited to see this keep going thank you guys so much for being here today thank you so much for joining me on the channel i better have done the editing right this time i keep forgetting to add the slate but uh we got another new patron to the channel thank you so much all patrons it's wonderful to having your support look forward to the upcoming patron casts and asking questions in the discord those of you who aren't patrons do not worry i'm just happy you're here i appreciate it um if you want to support the channel and get to look at behind the scenes, please check out the Patreon link in the description below, but do not worry. Otherwise, thank you so much for being a part of this grand adventure with me, and I hope to get to see you in future episodes as well. Uh, we're starting a brand new series on Monday. It's not super brand new, though. It's, it's Mubla Photon Melodies, uh, which will have the fantastic Altered Fable game, which is effectively... A dating the dating sim game if you got to have like a, all the characters you loved from alternative but in the happy extra universe so that'll be just delicious to go down so join me on monday for the first episode of that i hope other than that i'm looking forward to just continuing the story and figuring out what the heck's gonna happen with this final fight but and uh, the music again like always is bumping so i'm real excited to, to kind of see how this plays out but for now thank you so much hope you have a great rest of your day hope you have a great end of your year hopefully we get to have a brand new start to a brand new year and it gets to be a, a bit better than the last one let's just say that but until the next video you're watching me have to see me in next i'll see you there